It's been a while. And I know, it looks like I took kind of like um, an unexpected break since the last movie I saw. But trust me that I have my own reasons. I'll get, I, I'll tell you why. Uh, uh, I mean, the, uh, what was the last movie I saw? Oh yeah, Madame Web. And from that point, there wasn't exactly any movie that kind of caught my attention. Okay, maybe there was one in particular, but it was on a lim in, in a limited movie theater, but I, I was also pretty busy with two things. My first thing is that I had a visitor. Uh, I had a guest in, in the, uh, here, in, here in the household, so I had to give it very special attention to that, uh, to that relative, and it kept me busy. And the second reason is that, believe it or not, I got sick. I had probably a, a nasty case of, of, of the, I think it's probably the flu or it was just a nasty cold. But trust me, it was so nasty that I thought that I had COVID so much that I even test myself. Don't worry, it was negative, but still it was pretty bad. And I've been hearing that it was, it was a very nasty season. So those are usually my biggest reasons uh, why I could I couldn't go to any other movie or or even watch something on streaming at least to keep myself busy because like I said what I'm doing here is is mostly a hobby uh, and also before I I start out this review I do, I am filming also right now uh, telling you that. I did receive the heart, the sad news that the legendary Akira Toriyama of Dragon Ball fame has passed away, sadly. So, uh, it, 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 so trust me that th when I went to see the movies and all that stuff, this is kind of like the biggest thing that was stuck in my mind. And it is pretty sad. I really love his his work. I grew up with Dragon Ball. I I re even like you know his other work like Doctor Slump. Uh, I even read Sandland, and his upcoming movie slash projects. You know, revolving the whole thing. He, he also had ver a very memorable and iconic way of character design that is being used for Dragon Quest and Chrono Trigger. This is so. And so with those few words, I just want to say, Akira Toriyama, if you're listening to this from heaven, and I know that I'm not speaking Japanese, still, it's still, uh, it's easy to say rest in peace, but I want to say, tell you thank you for all, all the contribution to the, to the culture, which you made this world full of, uh, full of, how, how can I say, power, uh, powerful warriors, and, and we're going to always cherish your grand imagination that you gave us. Speaking of imagination, <laughs> that's the movie I just, that's the movie I just saw. Uh, well, uh, Imaginary. Uh, the latest movie uh, that Bloomhouse Studios uh, decided to pop out. And it's been two, it's been it's been now kind of like two months ever since that we had our last uh, uh, Bloomhouse movie, you know, with Night Swim. Uh, but apparently they tried to market a little bit more on this one. And in, in funny ways, I can see why. I, I kind of be beginning to believe that this movie was pulled out and made in a faster rate because because uh, later this year we're gonna get this Ryan Reynolds movie called If as for Imaginary Friends. So apparently Bloomhouse is like, oh, they're gonna they're they're gonna have an Imaginary Friend mo movie. Now let's make an Imaginary Friend horror movie. And I saw the trailers, and right in the get go, I did see some red flags that uh, that made me see that this was not gonna be a good movie. For one. It's gonna be one of those movies, horror movies, that is gonna have one of my least favorite tradition, which is the scary children. When, you know, bad acting child, uh, doing bad acting stuff, and it's gonna have some kind of playful thing that 
that, that, that adults are gonna stupidly brush it up like, oh, this is a child thing, and then things get worse and worse and, 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 until they, they decide to take it seriously. I was never a fan of those ones, considering that it, it, it reminded me of that movie from many, many years ago. When I was a wee little child and I, and I was kind of like naive to the world, I will always remember the first bad movie I ever seen in my life. And that movie was, was Hide and Seek. And, and that, that one had kind of like a similar premise about this little girl who had an imaginary friend and it, causing, and, and it causes a lot of bad things. And, and, and man, that up to this day, I remember this being one of the worst movies I ever seen in my life. And probably the first bad movie ever. And, and, and you can tell that I'm not exactly a fan of those because these ones are kind of like the easy target to make, you know, children seem so innocent to the point that it's kind of like annoying. There are some things that I'm gonna get through that, but let me talk, but you, you can tell that these are kind of like my initial bias with, with that movie. And, and although, although I'm, not gonna, I'm not gonna lie just by saying that it, it is a premise that can be done uh, about a killer imaginary friend. And I, it's almost like, the, like, it's almost like making a horror movie version of that of, of that episode of the Powerpuff Girls. Uh, and, uh, yeah, there was an episode of the Powerpuff Girls in which this kid has an imaginary friend that apparently it causes chaos. Uh, but you'll get to that. So, be, but so I decided to watch that movie because it was either that or Kung Fu Panda. And uh, you know that, that you know concerning that I do have a certain bias against a certain actor. This is why I had to go with imag imaginary. And I, and and you know what? I don't want to know if it was good or bad that other movie because whether it was good or it was bad, Kung Fu Panda Four was good or bad. I will say that imaginary. It wasn't any better. That was, that was bad. Imaginary was bad. But, you know what? It wasn't Madam Web. Honestly, I'm debating myself which was worse. It was either this one or Night Swim. Because both of them are for the same company. But the biggest reason why Imaginary can't be uh, can't be compared to Madame Web is because Madame Web is some kind of a special bad that is kind of like hard to describe. Because oh yeah, you know what? Now that I think about it, now I can see why. Because Madame Web is so bad is incompetent. But this one is bad that it is just it is just downright disappointing. Because there is some there is some semblance that there is something that could have worked, but they don't. It this is one of those typical Bloomhouse movies that falls into the trap that it wants to be a PG-13 movie. It it goes only by the book, but makes things even more more reprehensibly and either annoying or lacking or uh, 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 what was what was the word incoherent that was uh, that movie was an incoherent mess in in a lot of wasted potential that this is something this is very something very typical um on Bloomhouse, um, on these kind of PG-13 Bloomhouse movies that is, it just falls for the same common denominator of, because they want to attract the kind of like the teenage audience, but it just keeps itself into a limit that 
it doesn't go beyond for what it could be. So what we got is a very shallow, most of the time boring, unimaginative, unscary horror movie. And by the way, yes, it is one of those that relies on jump scares. Of jump scares with orchestra stakes. Oh my god. And guess what? I counted. There are eight of them. I count eight of them. And I think I'm gonna... I didn't count two of them because uh, because I don't think they were kind of like jump scares, but it was just kind of like something happening. Uh, happening. Uh, and and there was... It, it feels like a jump scare, but there was no orchestra string. And I was like, I don't know if I had to count, count it or not. Okay, I think this is kind of like my spoiler-free thing because I'm gonna go through the the whole the I'm gonna go through the review. I'm gonna try my best to. Uh, uh, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go a little bit spoilerific with this with this one. But talking of you know bit by bit by this movie, and it, it's not kind of like worth it. I'm not even gonna bother to put a a spoiler section, uh, but because. Because honestly, you're not missing much. Even when I tell you, you're uh, you will see that oh, it's something that we have seen kind of like many other times. But here's the thing. Okay, let's get started. Okay, the the movie is about this woman who is played by Demanda the Wanda Wise. And she kind of sounds like a Wanda Sykes for some reason. Okay, the Wanda the Wanda Wise. She's this woman who marries this. And marries this guy played by Tom Payne. Uh, it, she marries him, and while well, he has his, uh, he has his daughters. Uh, there is the the teen, uh, the teenage daughter played by Tegan Burns, and this little girl played by Piper Braun. I'm watching IMDb by the way because I don't, I don't remember names. So because because our main protagonist wants to, uh, uh, wants to. How can I say connect with with his estranged uh, stepdaughters because one of them is a little girl and and the other one is a uh, well she's a bitch I'll get to that uh, it, she so what it, so she moves into the they move into her old childhood childhood house everything's going fine and dandy until the little girl she finds this teddy bear. And she begins to play around saying that it is her imaginary friend named Chauncey. And it, it seems innocent enough until things get a little bit scary when she just, when she gets a little bit, not only too attached to the bear, but also, uh, but also uh, uh, the bear kind of begins to, uh, to do some shady things. And the little girl is like, Chauncey doesn't like you. She begins kind of having like this kind of attitude, and and she she tries to do, she's playing kind of like a scavenger hunt that things get creepy. And so yeah, it goes kind of like the creepy vibe. But little that they know is that this whole Chauncey thing is also connected to our main character's past, and and some something supernatural is also happening there. And of course, it involves the imaginary friend. That's the. That's kind of like the gist of the whole synopsis. It and honestly, this is where I have kind of like a bad vibe because if you if you hear a little bit the the, the premise itself, it really reminded me of again hide and seek. Uh, uh, sorry about my neighbors. Sorry about my neighbors again. But like I was saying, I really hated uh, hide and seek. And it scarred me enough to 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 see that movie similar to that about this this little child, you know, having this imag imaginary friend, and it it gets kind of like annoying and all this stuff. Although the, in hide and in hide and seek we got uh, I, 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 who was it? I think it was Dakota Fanning or Dakota. I don't remember. It was a Dakota. Uh, she was a. Uh, she was kind of like a very mean-spirited girl. I fucking... Sorry, I, 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 I dropped an F-bomb. I, I never do that. It, 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 I didn't remember the... I don't... 
I didn't like, you know, in hide and seek, you know, when the little girl goes, Charlie, 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 Charlie. Oh my God. So that movie was no different. Imaginary was no different. We got a little girl and they have, you know, the imaginary friend. And it's, it's, there is supernatural things that are happening. This is the, and, and by the way, I'm not exactly spoiling you because this is what the movie is trying to sell, that there is indeed something, something supernatural. It's not, it's not, I mean, the movie is not clever enough to turn it into a psych psychological tra a thing. It kind of tries, it kind of tries sometimes with the characters, but man, that... It, it, it gets kind of like flat and boring and unpredictable. And funny thing is that for the first moments of the movie, it kind of goes into what you get to see in the trailer. But then it and suddenly it kind of like the, during the climax of the movie, it kind of turns into the mixture between Insidious and Beetlejuice for some reason. Uh, but now let me talk about the actors because, uh, okay, for, to be, to be a little bit generous, they're not Madame Web bad, but you can tell that these, uh, these actors, they, 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 they just kind of just spewing up their lines and honestly, they're, they're just kind of like wooden. I even thought I was gonna give credit that the Wanda wise, she kind of tries, but sometimes she comes up a little bit kind of like a doormat of a character. And I thought I don't blame her. It's mostly kind of like this character in which she's basically a character that she having you know a rocky relationship with uh, with with the teenage daughter, which I'll get to that. But she have kind of like a she wants to have to have a special bonding with the little girl, which I'll, I'll also get to that. And she loves her husband, and well, she's also an illustrator. She she she's basically an Academy Award illust uh, children's uh, children book il illustrator. And I gotta say, the the the, uh, the her character designs are not bad. She she's making this book about about this caterpillar and the spider. A funny thing is that looking at the character design of the spider, I was like, I seen that art style before. And for some reason, I was kind of rem it kind of reminded me of of either Chris Sanders' art style, or it was the, uh, uh, what was it, Dave and Liz, the creator of that webcomic named Dreamkeepers, kind of remind me that. But anyway, that character also is kind of hidden, has something hidden in her past that. Uh, uh, that when the movie kind of cements itself. This is where it gets kind of like awkward in, in a way. And it, I mean, she, you can tell that there was something interesting in that character, but honestly, honestly, I, uh, you couldn't, you couldn't get too much about this character. Um, other character, okay, wait, continuing on. Uh, I'm gonna say very little about Tom Payne, uh, the husband character, because guess what? He's not almost eating into the movie. Why? Because apparently this movie wanted to uh, wanted to get rid of him. It, it, they have him for a couple of scenes, and then he's like, "Hey, I'm going to a vacation. See you around. Bye." He just he just then disappears from the movie. The guy is gone. He doesn't show up except for a brief moment into the in in the climax of the movie, but but. <laughs> the guy's just gone. <laughs> and, and, and this is where we get stuck with the two with the two stepdaughters, which these are both the worst actors actresses in the movie. Well, not only the actresses but also the characters. For example, the the step the, the teenage stepdaughter. My God, for for the grand majority of the movie, she's an insufferable angsty teenager who apparently she has kind of like this this hatred to her stepmother she she technically cusses her well not in not in not in kind of like a 
uh, like a F-bomb manner, but so disrespectful to the point that she's so unlikable. And she's one of those, you know, those te teenage, teenage, teenage angsty stereotypes that you see in, in these kind of movies, in which it's one of those in which you just want to slap that character, but man, and and, and the, when when she begins to say some toxic things about her her stepmother without kind of like any concrete reason, it's it, and how she is little cares about her other family members. She's so unlikable, and, and that makes it makes the audience kind of like really hard. To root for this character, especially when I mean, I'm not saying that unlikable characters can be good protagonists or something like that, or you can't write something like that. But if you wanted to root for this character, you have to, how can I say, make up for something to make this character work. And and now I'm talking about the little girl, which I do have a problem with these kind of character because this is one of those, this is one of those another one of those characters in which, you know. I always talk like this in this petty voice because that that makes me look cute. Whether it is the direction of the of uh, 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 of the acting director or whatever it is from the actor, I don't care. That acting sucks, and you know what? I don't think any child talks like that. Funny thing. I was actually wondering myself while I was walking around, walking around, pondering about the movie, and then I watched some kind of like little little children while walking around, you know, on the uh, by the street, and I was trying to hear them talk, and at the and and then I was kind of thinking that what normal child talks like it wants to become this pudding commercial starring Mara Wilson. I tried, but it, honestly, this this phony kid kid voice kind of makes this acting very disingenuous, and, and it's forcefully cute. Although, although, okay, let me give it a little bit of a break with the child, so I don't sound very heartless by saying that there are moments that she tries. She does indeed kind of like tries. That's that's the little bit of compassion that I I'm gonna have with a little girl. And there are some other characters that that are into the story. Uh, there is the uh, there is the catatonic father who, who is who is he's all the time you know sitting there because he apparently had a past which I'll get by. Uh, there is uh, it's kind of like the psychologist who she appears you know to you know saying that. Oh, here's some of the solutions that there is. There is also the cute neighbor kid who he is kind of like just looking cute, but he's kind of a little bit of an asshole. I mean, he, there comes even a moment in which he, he just brings some pills and he just had one in the, in the tongue like, ah, something like that. And I was in my mind, just like, you know what? That's going to taste pretty bad. And, and he's going to be kind of like the potential victim. And of course, probably this is gonna be served also uh, one of the worst acting in the movie. And uh, there is this woman, I, I, her, I think her name is Betty Buckley, who she plays kind of like, uh, like a babysitter from uh, uh, that. Then she wrote books about, uh, about imaginary friends and they think that she's crazy. And she's mostly exposition woman who is just talk exposition about things that are happening here and there and i was surprised that i was watching a review of some guy and then he brought me this big surprise and that is that she's the same woman who was in the happening it, it, it is during the infamous scene in which she's like you're going to you're going to kill me and then mark Wahlberg's like what no yeah that woman um, but man, that woman is there just to spout out exposition in the most, in, in the in, in the most kind of like intrusive way possible. Okay, all right. Continuing on, uh, then we got the cinematography that 
it's just pretty basic for a, for a Bloomhouse horror movie. It's also not very good. Like I said, it still relies on jump scares that it just wants it that something comes like boom, an orchestra string. And I counted eight of them. And there's some that they don't, uh, that, uh, there's some that I, I didn't, I, did, I was struggling to count because they didn't come with an orchestra string, but you can tell that they, they, they wanted to, but they kind of hold back, uh, kind of like twice. For example, there's one in particular that it made me raise my eyebrows, in which the teenage girl kind of took a selfie and then she sees that someone was looking at her by the window. She gets out and then we get introduced to the boyfriend, but this is how he gets introduced. The, uh, the girl is outside, the camera is kind of having this open space. And then the guy, he, he just appeared like this. Almost like he was he was ducking ducking to the camera, waiting for the opportunity. And then the director is like, all right, slowly stand up. And he goes like, and then boom, no jump scare. But the guy is like, hey, what's going on? No, I'm serious. This is, I remember, I will remember that moment. And okay, can, what else there is? There are also some shots in which the CGI is is basically bad. It's not exactly kind of like a good CGI, it, especially when we get kind of like the nightmare scene in the beginning where there's a spider creature and the creature monsters, to its credit, they're not exactly horrible, but they're not exactly kind of like or like exactly good and even even I think the poster spoils uh one of the things in which in which yeah we got the teddy bear Chauncey uh, that it, it it is technically the that quote-unquote mascot of the movie and there is also the, kind of like this monster form which the monster form is kind of is someone made a a, 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 a fan art of Freddy Fazbear that's the best way I can describe this. It's not a horrible design, but uh, but, on, but honestly, with the CGI and all this stuff, it feels very synthetic and not exactly uh, very scary. There's even other, another monster that appears in the climax and it's pretty lame. It's, it's, uh, the best way I can describe that monster is that I think they went into 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 practical effect, but somehow the practical effect means that they just grab a burlap sack, almost like the uh, the Christopher Nolan scarecrow, and just put it there, and then put some uh, some night lights on, on for for the eye effects and make it look kind of like like Halloween, <laughs> something like that. Uh, the, this is kind of like the, the, the gist of the monster designs, uh, I will say. And unfortunately, there were some moments in which the CGI doesn't doesn't match well, especially with the, when they wanted to hide it on the background, which sometimes it can be used subtly, but it, it kind of barely, it can, we barely get to see it. And there's another thing that I want to tell you about the, some of the effects, but for that, I gotta tell you uh, mo the, the biggest gist about the movie, which is technically kind of like the story itself. And this is where I'm going into spoiler territory, but I don't care about this because here's the thing. Here's the thing. The whole thing is that the little girl found this, ima uh, this imaginary friend, Chauncey, and the, and, and, and the protagonist uh, uh, is like, oh, that's cute and all that stuff. And things get a little bit kind of like scary and it and, and gets a little bit creepy especially because a little girl kind of begins to play kind of like a scavenger a scavenger hunt and things get kind of like really really stupid and and then we get you know woman's the, the lady having giving exposition then our the husband goes away because of I don't know they didn't have enough money for this guy and and then it's and and then the, the neighbor guy invites himself to the house because a little the, because the because the teenage girl had, 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 had kind of wants to hit on him. She he acts like an asshole, and the little girl is like Chauncey doesn't like you. I hope he eats you or something like that. And then kind of becomes kind of like this scary this quote unquote scary moment. But here's another complaint about this movie because the movie is PG thirteen. You barely get any death 
and barely you're gonna get any blood or violence out. It's gonna, it, it plays out too safe. Uh, just when you think that the guy is gonna get eaten or something like that. No, it's just, the guy is like, he gets scared by, by big scary monster. And, and then the guy is like, I'm not going there anymore. Okay, smart choice, but still, but still, it, it is really PG-13 lame. And, 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 and then comes up, uh, and then things get awkward also, but when, when after that, our, our protagonist decides to talk to the little girl who is apparently hiding in the bed under her cover, and she begins to talk to her, almost giving her kind of like this speech. And in my mind, it's like, you know, if you want to make, uh, if you want to talk to your children, isn't it convenient if they watch eye to eye? I mean, woman, do like this. Make sure tell that your child is, is listening to you. But no, she was, she was all, always talking to the teddy bear because the little girl was outside and because that little girl, I don't know, I don't know if this girl, even for a small, small child is stupid. But she's using the scavenger hunt. She's like, she she begins to kind of pick up this board with a nail, and it, because in the scavenger list it, it was they were saying something that must hurt, and she's like, I don't know, I don't want to do it, but she still want to do it. She still do it. Uh, there was almost like no reason for that, and, and no reason for her to say no, I don't want to or something like that. She's just hesitant and still do it, even though of course. Yeah, uh, she she gets stopped by the main character, and she just gets scraped on her on her elbow. Then the psychologist comes, and then after many things, I'm gonna rush into it. It is revealed that nobody's seen the bear except for a main character protagonist and a little girl, because apparently the the imaginary friend is is our protagonist's imaginary friend because of her trauma because she also had a traumatic experience with an imaginary friend, and she kind of forgot it. There's almost like no explanation. She apparently had this convenient, convenient amnesia, where where uh, where she just forget out of convenience. There was, I mean, I could have buy it if she took kind of like hypnotism in order to forget things, but no, there was kind of like this convenient uh, convenient uh, thing that she kind of forget. And uh, the little girl then disappeared because the scavenger hunt thing was actually kind of like a recipe for a ritual to open the door to another dimension for imaginary for imaginary friends. And they put a lore on imaginary friends that is kind of similar to kind of like the boogeyman or something like that. Oh, and here's the thing. When the teenage daughter, she kind of have a bitch fit on on her stepmother because she's like blaming her for the disappearance of the of the, of the little girl. She sees the uh, she sees the kind of the, the babysitter who knows everything. She's she begins to t to tell her the lore of all this and and here comes and you know you know that the dialogue is pretty bad when she begins to say oh it's like Bing Bong. And and and, and it, it, the movie kind of does three times in which it nudges you like, uh uh, it's like Pixar's uh, uh, Inside Out, uh huh. Uh, oh, it's like Bing Bong. It does it kind of like twice. And so you were like, oh, it's not like Bing Bong. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we get it. Then, <laughs> then they go. So they, they the three characters reunite. And the the stepmother retraced all her the steps in doing the scavenger hunt, and she also began to remember that her father he didn't he basically went crazy because apparently, apparently she was almost being sucked because in this world the imaginary friends they kind of become this entity that they're your friends but then later they kind of become evil and they're gonna take your children and this is why and there was kind of like different cases that happened. Even there was a child. There was a video of a child in which in which he lost a thumb. But but then they do the scavenger hunt. So they open this portal, and apparently this main character kind of happened something like that, in in which in which the father basically saved her 
and then he lost his sanity because he looked at the monster's eyes. And 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 it's not as bad as the mother from Madame Web, but it kind of gets the go there in the kind of like convenient way. So, uh, so long story short, they make the requirements to open the uh, open the door, uh, and then when they get in. It's almost like the lousiest haunted mansion ever. Well, not as lousy as the Willy Wonk experience, but uh, but it's mostly like Bloomhouse House of Mirrors. And for a movie that it, it they call itself like the world of imagination or something like that, I was expecting something more colorful, something more imaginative, let's say. Not, not exactly kind of like the House of Mirrors or like the ghost world in, in the Insidious movies. Oh, I, by the way, I didn't see the, the last Insidious movie, The Red Door. Uh, people told me that it's really bad. But you, uh, but, uh, but honestly, man, that, it, and, and, and then, the, and then of course the, the, the babysitter kind of, George, it, she goes into the crazy, the crazy mode. It's like, it's like Alice in Wonderland. It's, it, 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 children would love to see this place, and I was like, "This place, really? Because it looks like a haunted house more than than something where children will go there." I mean, I mean, you know what? Sometimes the scariest things also can be the more deceptive. I mean, if you want to kind of like an an imaginary world or something like that. I mean, I don't mind kind of like a creepy term, kind of a little bit like Tim Burton style or or something kind of like drawn at the line, but they have to, they have to be kind of like deceptive in a way or another. But no, it was more like a it was like a house, a house of mirrors, and the woman kind of okay, the the woman became it becomes crazy, and then she she locks locks the uh, locks themselves out because. She doesn't want to go because why do we want to be here? The, the creature, uh, the creature just told me to do it because we're gonna live young every time. And lo and behold, she gets killed by the by the by the bear creature. Off screen, we see blood. PG thirteen. Then we get kind of like chase scene. They, they wanted to make some horror things and then they found this little girl uh, playing uh, playing you know how because she's like now i'm with my two mommies oh uh, you know what i do also forget to mention that they there is kind of, they wanted to to make three-dimensionally the little girl by saying that she's afraid of fire because well she, apparently she was a victim of domestic abuse because the mother her mother her real mother was uh, got mentally insane that she have kind of like a scar of, of birds on, on, on her arm and oh but, and, and funny thing that crazy that domestic abuse mother she does appear into the movie briefly because she apparently made cause it made the house invasion but she's only she's only there just to uh, give out a, a, a jump scare but it, but then uh, she appears kind of like uh, uh, kind of dressed up in this gaudy uh, gaudy Alice in Wonderland thing, and then and then apparently they begin to say that oh this is a world where our imagination is powerful. We do our imagination, so we're gonna imagine an exit. So they begin to you know create the door and with, you know with the blue things, and then the little girl is like, you know what? I don't know. I'm gonna I'm, I, I I don't want to go. I want to go home. Out of nowhere. And then she begins to, they begin to create the door and then the monster is like, don't, you won't get away. And, um, and yeah, it, yeah, climax things happen. I'm not going to go too much into detail. But there is one thing that happened. And you know what? That is the moment. I was, uh, I was thinking that the movie was bad, but I was kind of like a little bit general saying that like, even in a kind of like a C or something like that. But then came that moment. That moment pissed me off because it was so horribly executed and so bad that this is where, I, this, this is the part that 
I gave this movie minus 10 points. Here's the thing. The monster, uh, 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 the monster technically uh, 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 traps our main protagonist inside the imaginary world. The other two girls, they, they manage to get out. And then she be, there's a chase scene with our main protagonist. And she tries to open, you know, the other, you know, the other door. <laughs> the, the door where they came in. But then the other two girls managed to open the door and she finally managed to get out. And then the movie once decides to, you know, have this ending in which, yeah, now every, everyone in the family are having a family happy. She reads, you know, her latest book to the catatonic father. Even the father is there, you know, out of nowhere. But then the movie plays out like, for example, oh, you're trapped in my world. And then everyone turns into the monster and saying that, oh my God, you're still trapped in the imaginary world and all that stuff. At that point, you think this is where the movie should end it. No, the movie doesn't end here. The movie then pulls out by saying that, no, I'm not gonna do that. She, and then she gets saved out of nowhere by the, by, by the, real, the real stepdaughter. And they managed to get her out, and 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 only for to you know for, to have you know the little girl, uh, how can I say it? Overcome her fear to fire, to burn the creature. The house is burned, and then the uh, the, uh, the the three girls they just they just try to they just try to find a hotel because I don't know how they're gonna explain to the husband and father that hey hey we just burned the house we're homeless now. But then they decided to go to another hotel when they see a, a, another kid with a teddy bear. And apparently this kid is also going through, you know, with an with imaginary friend. So apparently, so what was the point of destroying the house when the imaginary friend can go, you know, anywhere? It's almost like they're using the Monsters Inc. slash, uh, slash, uh, what was the Little Monsters uh, rules? So what was the point? What? bothered me about this movie is that is that it had the goal to have this double ending honestly i would have been fine if the movie just ended with a woman being trapped in the imaginary world not any not every single movie can have kind of like a good happy ending especially when you're going for kind of like in a horror movie but this one stretches out and you can feel that that additional minutes of for to make this 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 happier ending it feels like a stretch I hated that moment but you know what I think I talk enough about imaginary this that was uh, I never thought to call um, a Bloomhouse movies very soulless. I have like a, I, I mean, I just have my share enjoyment of, of some bad Bloomhouse movies. And even I have kind of like an enjoyment, you know, talking about it. But man, that imaginary was totally bad. Still to this day, like I said, I'm debating myself if this is worse than Night Swim. Of the... Now that I think about it, I think Night Swim was a little bit more incompetent, but they both are having kind of like the same, both have kind of like the same share of problems of, of, of bad acting, incoherent mess of a lore. Not, it, 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 it doesn't establish the rules very well. And, and, and we don't care so much about the character because either the character are either stupid or they are they don't act exactly like human beings they don't know how to put kind of two plus two is four there is so much convenient things happening but but i'm sorry you may you may say that uh, there is a semblance of imagination for this movie because i can see that there this 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 is a premise that might have worked if done in better hands but unfortunately, for a movie that even feels long, it gets tedious and boring and sometimes even flat stupid. <sighs> what 
a year we're having, and Bloom Pound Studio is not is not helping. So, anyway, that's all I have to say about Imaginary. Can't wait to see a better movie a few months ago about with Imaginary Friends, which is none other than If. So, if you excuse me, I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go to a scavenger hunt with Spencer. Oh, something that hurts. I already seen it. I already seen something that hurt.